and I have our next speaker, uh, Rika, already waking in the background, and I'm going to add her to the screen now and say hello. Hello, good morning. Hi, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> so let me just uh, open uh, my little cheat sheet. Uh, where are you uh, calling us from? Uh, from Austria. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Like like a neighbor. <laughs> as, as you can probably hear, I'm from Germany, but I'm on the other end. I'm like close to Denmark. So oh. so we have we have a thousand kilometers between us, but <laughs> that's. Uh, uh, it's, it's really nice to be on pyjamas where you meet people from all over the world. And I'm so happy that you come, came here today to um, help us out and uh, do a presentation. Uh, so it's uh, 11 o'clock now, so we are on schedule. So i really like to welcome our next speaker, Erika Horvath. And uh, you brought us something today about command line best practices? Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> So uh, I'm going to add your screen uh, to the uh, screen here and I'm going away and uh, I hope that you have a great presentation. And afterwards, if there's any questions, please type them into the YouTube stream or uh, onto our Discord. Thank you. So welcome uh, to the Display Jamas talk, CLI Best Practices with uh, Typer and Rich. And, and command line applications can be quite cool. So if you are as a Python dev, I assume that you work with several uh, command line applications and perhaps some of them are cool like this. Unfortunately, uh, many of the applications which I uh, you used to write or write even now, sometimes rather look like this. And I definitely don't uh, promise that by the end of this 20 minutes, you will like, uh, you will be able to write such cool things as uh, uh, Fastero, but rather discuss some of these uh, quite common problems, which for example, this little script also has like how to handle error, how to give a very clear message whether script, uh, whether the command has been successful, and how to build applications which uh, cooperate well with each other, so that we can present the whole workflow. So, in order to do that, I would like uh, to introduce three tools which I have found uh, very useful. Uh, the first one is the CLIG, which is a open source guide for find applications, and it's intentionally language agnostic and, uh, and the two other things are python libraries so typer which is a command line framework and rich which is a library for writing uh, all, all some stuff to the terminal so a little bit about me i work for sorcery uh, creating code quality tools uh, we have some uh, the VS Code and uh, PyCharm extensions, but here, of course, I included a screenshot, screenshot from our command line application, where, as uh, you can see, it uh, looks at your uh, current git diff and tries to find and fix some code quality pro problems in the git diff. So let's start with the CLIG. So the command line interface guideline. If I have to summarize it in one sentence, uh, it uh, uh, said that command line applications should be human first, but machine friendly whenever possible. <laughs> and in order to achieve that, the CLIG uh, uh, gives quite a lot of uh, ideas uh, how to do this. So it is uh, uh, divided into two parts. So in an EPUB format, it's approximately 50 pages long. And it has two main parts, the philosophy, which uh, lists several principles. Uh, among those most important ones, human first and machine friendly. 
And it also uh, contains some guidelines, which is more about uh, the implementation, what kind of options, the subcommands should you define, and this kind of things. What it doesn't contain is code because it is intentionally language and technology agnostic. So that's what I am trying to add here. To, so we will briefly go through the philosophy, uh, the basic guide, uh, guidelines and uh, some of the optional ones, and then uh, show some uh, examples, how see how to implement those things in Python. So let's start with uh, some philosophy. Uh, these, uh, all these principles are really around these two uh, big concepts, human first and machine friendly. And in order to be machine friendly, a uh, script needs to be, first of all, composable. It needs to work well with other co commands, uh, even in uh, CI or in a DevOps orchestration system. In order to be human first, it should have some empathy with that human user. Uh, and it's a very useful metaphor to regard a command line program as a conversation where, uh, for example, if an error happens, then this is an opportunity to tell to the user who is the other participant of this conversation what might have gone wrong, what uh, they need to. Uh, do to correct this. And uh, with that, uh, their next concept is very close to this, the saying just enough. And then there are surprisingly a lot of uh, principles which are useful both uh, for us humans and for uh, the other scripts using our tool. So consistency, both within a program and with uh, other uh, programs, general uh, CLI customs that uh, that's something which both humans and machines like. Ease of discovery is also interesting, and of course, robustness. So, the CLI uh, guidelines are divided into two parts, and there are intentionally very few basics which you should consider whenever you <coughs> uh, write a command line program because these are things which occur in every kind of program. And then there are lots of lots of uh, optional or nice to have uh, things. So if you have uh, some time, I encourage you uh, to dig into the CLIG and also to consult it on an ad hoc basis as a reference if you have some uh, questions while developing the command line application. So the very first uh, basic guideline is that you should use a command line argument parsing library. We can already check this because all our examples will use Piper. And uh, 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 this already uh, solved some of the issues we uh, saw in my first not so nice script, for example, giving better error messages if a uh, required argument is missing, uh, providing a reasonable help for those arguments and options, and so on. <laughs> The second uh, very important uh, principle is that you should indicate somehow whether a command was successful or not. So just an em empty string with command finished isn't uh, uh, the, be uh, the best way to communicate. And uh, on how to implement, how to communicate this, uh, there is a, a CLI convention, which is the exit code which should be uh, zero on success and something else on failure. And then the third uh, basic principle is that uh, whenever you output something, uh, you should consider whether it should go to standard out or the standard error. And if you assume that all your users will be humans actually sitting in front of the computer and interacting with your application that way, then this doesn't seem to be that crucial. But as soon as the output gets piped into another command or uh, whatever, this becomes uh, very important. So let's start with the exit code. And uh, so 
the principle is on success we return zero, on failure uh, we return uh, something else. And not surprisingly, Kuiper very nicely follows uh, this convention. So if you, uh, you reach the end of a command function or if you return somewhere, then uh, it, it will exit with the exit code zero. So if, you, uh, if an error happens, you explicitly need to exit with raise typer.exit and providing a code. <clears throat> Next point, standard out versus standard error. Uh, so the primary basic principle is that the primary output should go to the standard out and any kind of other stuff like errors, log messages, whatever, they belong to standard error. Uh, one interesting thing to consider is uh, that does this the uh, output makes sense as the input of another command. So if this command gets piped, do I want to contain this piece of information there? That might help us decide. And here uh, we can see some code examples uh, from uh, Rich. That uh, in Rich we use uh, we always use a console object to print. And by default, it prints to the standard out. And with the standard error equals true option, we can uh, uh, print to the standard error. So in the <coughs> uh, error handling, uh, we can see these two principles uh, working nicely uh, together. So it is very much recommended that we have a common helper function in your uh, CI program and use this whenever an error happens. This helps a lot with consistency. So to make sure that all errors are handled in the same way, uh, both visually for the users and also for uh, possible other programs to process it. And using such a helper function can make makes it easier to follow these conventions that the error should be printed to a standard error and uh, use a on a zero exit code. So this is a helper function which you can uh, possibly uh, copy and use in some <coughs> CLI applications. So talking about output generally, not just in error cases, but also if uh, things go well, uh, here uh, the CLIG again uh, says the same principles. So output should be first of all human friendly. And if it doesn't impact readability, we should also strive for machine readable output. So let's see some uh, more specific examples how to reach this. Uh, for example, uh, as first, of, let's uh, try to display something from a documentation. So uh, text in some human language. Uh, consisting of some sentences. And if we just use the built-in print as on the left, then you can see that it's not so nice to read because it just gets read randomly whenever we reach the end of the line. And <clears throat> instead, the way I recommend is to use a rich console, uh, which has exactly that benefit that it uh, considers such things for us. and uh, we, uh, as we can see on the right, it is wrap that word uh, at words, and it's much uh, nicer to read. But of course, we not always list uh, the whole sentences. Some uh, we output whole sentences. Sometimes what we output is more like list of items, and that's where this story gets a bit more tricky then just wrap it nicely always. Uh, if we look at it from a human point of view, uh, wrapping it nicely is again a good idea because uh, we can read it much better. But as you can see at the bottom of this screenshot, if we uh, 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 pipe this uh, output to, uh, to grab and try to search for all the talks uh, uh, that contain Jupiter, then we already get, <clears throat> then we get only a slightly shorter result than expected because we wrap the text. So 
for this reason if or we assume that the or uh, output will be processed by other programs for this list of items it might make sense to make it a bit uh, less uh, a, a bit less visually pleasing but more consistent that we can say that each line represents exactly one uh, item so <clears throat> And in order to distinguish this, uh, we have used this dash dash plain flag. And if you look at the code, yes. <clears throat> so we can see that we uh, defined a plain uh, flag. And uh, we used this soft wrap, which is uh, by default uh, a soft, uh, soft wrap option of the rich console, which is by default false. and for human uh, users, that is the meaningful default value most of the time. But now, uh, if we set this plain option, then we explicitly set this software app to true. <clears throat> this might be a useful uh, approach whenever you have some, uh, some kind of output where you can expect that one line represents one concept. For example, you are searching for something or uh, uh, De detecting some errors or, uh, or things like that. And the good question to ask is that how is it uh, probable that somebody will pipe this output into grep or wc the shell? And if yes, then you might consider soft grep or really providing a plain option to have both. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> uh, next. Uh, recommendation is that besides just uh, displaying these items one by uh, one and one item per line, uh, again, we can see the next uh, three talks. This time uh, structured a bit other way. So sorry, I uh, uh, included all these three talks in this example so that it's a bit uh, more uh, visible. Uh, and one uh, recommendation uh, from CLIG is to provide uh, uh, this uh, JSON uh, format uh, with the JSON option, which again has the uh, big advantage that it's both human readable and can be processed by uh, several uh, programs. So <clears throat> let's take a quick look at the code, how we have uh, provided this uh, JSON option. Again, the uh, uh, so the schema is quite similar to the one which we saw with the play, uh, plain option. Uh, this time, uh, so we provided a typer option, and this time we used the print JSON uh, uh, method of the rich console, which then <coughs> uh, uh, print, uh, printed for us some uh, JSON objects. <coughs> and I would like to mention that this is formatted nicely as uh, you saw, but if you pipe this into the other command, uh, in, into another command, it will pipe only the uh, JSON content itself. And one notable uh, difference compared to the plain option is that this time we, the option has a custom name. This show, uh, show JSON uh, is the name of the parameter, but that's just JSON, uh, the name of the option in order to avoid the name clash with the built-in module JSON. So speaking about uh, output, some uh, sometimes uh, we have operations which take a bit longer than just displaying uh, three small items. And uh, in that case, uh, it's very useful for uh, uh, the, the possibly impatient human users to give them some feedback while this is happening. And uh, for that, uh, Rich provides uh, two great components, uh, status, which is just a status info, and uh, so some kind of text, which you can, of course, also style, and a progress bar. So here I would like to, so here the implementation will be a bit more uh, complex because uh, we would like uh, so we uh, 
would like to uh, return a generator from our uh, logic uh, function. And then uh, afterwards, uh, we process these yielded items in the CLI module. So the basic uh, schema is that first, after we have some initial idea how long this thing might take, uh, for example, we have the count of the imported items, we yield an initial status. And then afterwards, as we process each item one by one, we yield one uh, element for uh, each of them. And then in the uh, in, our, in our CLI module, uh, here uh, we can see that we have two consoles, one for the standard out, one for the standard error. And uh, first of all, so uh, uh, first of all, we check this initial status and print a, a status message uh, of it to the standard error. And afterwards, uh, we start the progress bar and Every time we have processed uh, an item, uh, we uh, update uh, this progress bar, so we advance it one step. <clears throat> and this is a quite a nice way to keep our users informed while, uh, during such a longer running operation. So after uh, output, I also would like to talk a little bit about input. So the CLIG has uh, many different uh, recommendations around it and Typer and Rich uh, support many of them really well. So for example, providing meaningful default values is uh, quite straightforward with Typer options and arguments. And also uh, auto, you can set up auto-completion. Uh, so you will find some examples for this on the site, I will go that in, uh, instead here, I would like to talk more about interactivity. So the CLIG uh, has some, I think, great guidelines regarding interactivity that by uh, default, uh, if a value is missing, not don't just throw an error, but prompt for it, <clears throat> making the application more conversational and friendly. But of course, if uh, the user doesn't happen to be a human, it's uh, better to, uh, so we don't want to prompt. So we need to check whether standard input is an interactive terminal. And additionally, to make our uh, uh, application more flexible, uh, we should also support uh, some uh, flag. So they mentioned dash dash no input, uh, which can, uh, silence any kind of interactivity. And let's see how we can implement this. So here we have a simple CRUD application with a create function. Yeah, we create something with ID and description. And uh, of course, the user can always forget one of those. And <clears throat> besides or ID and description, we also have an option called interactive flag. And here we use uh, this uh, possibility from, uh, so two great features from Typer. Uh, first of all, uh, that uh, you can define a pair of flags uh, with this uh, uh, slash syntax. So if we have an uh, interactive and a no interactive flag, thanks to this single uh, uh, parameter. And additionally, uh, we can also define aliases. So <laughs> this uh, makes uh, our, our code a bit more readable because we don't need to write things like if no, no input. Instead, we can just like write if interactive. <laughs> and if we uh, in, uh, choose this technique, then it, uh, the recommendation is that the very first line of your uh, function probably should be something like that where we check whether we are in interactive modus and uh, we are uh, uh, if uh, the uh, standard input is a terminal and if this interactive flag is set to true and afterwards uh, whenever uh, we call uh, a prompt before that uh, we can check uh, 
network we are in interactive mode. So uh, uh, we have just scratched the surface. I uh, really uh, recommend to consult uh, the CLIG, which uh, is, is a great resource and contains many other uh, recommendations about how to <coughs> make uh, command line applications more, uh, both more user and machine, fr uh, machine friendly, or <coughs> should I say more user friendly for both audiences. And of course, I also absolutely recommend checking out the typer and uh, rich documentations. And uh, additionally, uh, you can uh, find a cookie cutter uh, uh, on GitHub. So this uh, cookie cutter type are rich where uh, it, it, so if you set up an application from scratch, then you already get some of these things which we have discussed. And if you want to uh, add these elements to an existing application, then uh, you might find the examples that this Python CLI examples .dev useful. So you can find the code which we have just seen in this talk there. So thanks a lot, and I'm looking forward to the questions. Uh, you are muted, Martin. I'll try again. Now you should be able to understand. Thank you, Christian, for coming in. Uh, uh, we had a comment on, on the website about people really liked your click def uh, in documentation link. And we learned a lot of today that people uh, thought about how to do proper command line interfaces. So that was really interesting. Thank you very much. Uh, now, Rika, you are muted for some reason. So let's unmute you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so do, do you do you work on command line interfaces in your daily work as well? Or... Yes. Uh, so we have uh, uh, both uh, VS Code uh, Py uh, and Python plugins and also command line application. And I have recently worked quite a lot uh, on it. So we have, uh, for example, added uh, some more uh, uh, inter uh, interactivity and some uh, uh, rich support recently in the past months. <laughs> uh, and did, did you have some things that you thought were really confusing and difficult about these? Mm -hmm. I would say that uh, well, partly integrating it with the rest of the application is quite a bit confusing. And yep. uh, uh, also, uh, uh, things like the the, uh, the progress bar for longer running applications on state for that. And one interesting uh, thing for us was to figure out what the uh, long running applications uh, <laughs> uh, uh, operations are in the first place. So what might uh, get them? So actually, I also wrote a blog post some weeks ago for the sorcery blog about uh, or various command line improvements and what <laughs> we learned on the day. <laughs> Oh, that that would be very interesting. Maybe uh, when we are done in a, in a minute or two, you can type the link into the chat, and we'll share it with everybody else who wants to read about more about command lines, because it's uh, really something people don't think about that much, uh, and it's always easy or much much easier to learn from people who've done a lot of these things than to invent the ideas yourself. Yes, I like these tools and, for example, cookie cutter also for this reason, because uh, I think that coming up with this would be uh, difficult if you see it and it looks like, oh, it's so logical. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So thank, thank you uh, again. Uh, that was very interesting. And I hope you're going to enjoy the rest of the talks and that we'll meet on some other conferences soon. <laughs>